السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. بسكوت هذه هي وذا سات سوماليلاند ناشنال تلفزيون. عم محمد أذن هي وذا إنجليش نيوز. Let's take a look at the main stories making headlines. President of Somaliland returns from a working trip to Berbera. Minister of the Interior held a banquet lunch for youths released from Mandera prison involved in youth misdemeanors in older region. Thousands attend New York funeral for shed policeman Rafael Ramos. President of Somaliland Ahmed Mohamed Mohamed Silalim returned to the capital Hargeisa from a work-related trip to the coastal city of Berbera where the president met cultural leaders and residents to discuss ongoing development efforts. The president, accompanied by a high-profile government delegation, has been visiting Berber for the last few hours and met residents of the city to discuss issues related to ongoing development efforts that the government undertook to ensure substantial progress on a number of key areas. Upon his return to, upon his return to the capital, the president took a road trip from Berber to the capital of Somaliland, where the president received warm welcome from residents of all districts between Berber and Hargeisa. When the president arrived in Hargeisa, he received warm reception from the residents of the capital. This was not the first visit by the president to Berber. On the contrary, the president visited several key districts across Somaliland to monitor and supervise situation in all regions and achievements made by the government ranging from providing social services to infrastructure developments. Minister of the Interior held a banquet lunch for youths released from Mandera prison involved in youth misdemeanors in older region. The event had in attendance Vice President of Somaliland, Abdurrahman Ismail Saleh. The event also had in attendance members of the Cabinet of Somaliland. The Minister of Interior, speaking to the media on the issue, stated that these youth were involved in misdemeanors that were harmful to the society and said that now the government of Somaliland, after giving them a probation period in Mandera prison, decided to release them and to supervise their progress. On the other hand, the Minister of Industries stated that the government of Somaliland is willing to give these youths a second chance and urge the youth of Somaliland to realize the importance of protecting their country instead of involving in these misdemeanors. In conclusion, Vice Minister of Minerals urged all parents to raise the awareness of their children on the significance of citizenship and show them the right path to becoming positive and active members of the society and be an example for the rest of the youth. Members of the body in charge of investigating crimes against humanity committed in Somaliland by the Siad Barrow regime held a press conference in the capital of Somaliland, Hargeisa, to discuss the achievements they've made so far and their future plans. Members of the body speaking to the local media stated that more have been achieved in ensuring that a number of mass graves have been found across the country, with also other mass graves is still undiscovered but are going to be displayed for the world. People in the mass graves are believed to be similarly executed by the toppled Siad Barrow regime, and the increasing number of mass graves found are testament to one of the biggest massacres in world history. The body responsible for investigating crimes against humanity committed against the people of Somaliland has taken steps to try to show the world the cruelty of the Siad Barrow regime and the massacre of hundreds of thousands of people which came following draconian measures exercised by the regime. An event designed to provide certificates for 19 government employees, finishing a training program on research as well as data collection and management systems took place in the capital Hargeisa. Government employees from ministries of trade, health, repatriation, parliamentary liaison and several other government institutions finished training on research and data systems to exercise their knowledge at government institutions to better serve the citizens. Chairman of the Civil Servants Institute, Professor Mohamed Mihile Bogore, is speaking at the event, elaborating on the training program that the government employees received and stressed that the government is committed to ensuring reforms on government institutions to promote more progress throughout the country. Other keynote speakers at the event highlighted the ongoing efforts can be a major drive 
to nationwide development and seed by reforms exercised on knowledge and experience of all government employees at various government institutions. The event concluded with certificates being provided to the government employees who finished the training program. Qatar Al Khairi organization held an event where a delegation from Qatar was handing over donated money to over 1,500 orphans in the capital of Somaliland, Hargeisa. Minister of Fisheries, Minister of State for Education, Vice Minister of Minerals and other keynote guests were attendant at the event. Mohammed Hussein, the representative of Qatar Al Khairiya in Somaliland, briefed the attendees on the objectives of this event and expressed his thankfulness to the participation of the governmental figures and their support to this cause. Minister of Fisheries Ali Cham Abourad welcomed the delegation from Qatar and praised their genuine initiatives to support these orphans and give them better lives for the future. Minister of State for Education and Vice Minister for Minerals both stressed on the need for encouragement for such projects serving the nation and urged the people of Somaliland to cooperate with them in order to increase their current efforts. Eventually, head of the Qatari delegation, Abdullah Jassim, expressed his joy on behalf of the entire team to witness and be part of the implementation of this initiative. You're so watching the English news on Somaliland National Television. And now for the main international headlines. <music> Syria said on Saturday it's willing to participate in preliminary consultations in Moscow aimed at restarting peace talks next year to end its civil war. An announcement on state television said Damascus was ready to take part in meetings in the Russian capital. Previous talks collapsed in Geneva last February. The report quoted a source at the foreign ministry. But members of the western-backed Syrian opposition have dismissed the Russian plan, saying there is no initiative. Moscow has repeated that it's willing to provide a venue for any upcoming talks between Syrian government and opposition. Foreign Ministry spokesperson said the talks would take place sometime after January 20, adding that the first stage would bring together home and foreign-based opposition before they're joined later by representatives of the Syrian government. This week, unverified video brought new claims that government forces have bombed civilian areas near Aleppo. Tens of thousands of police and other mourners filled the New York City church and nearby streets for the funeral on Saturday of one of two police officers singled out for their uniforms and shot dead a week ago. Rafael Ramos, who was 40, was killed along with his patrol partner Wen Jin Liu. The U.S. Vice President paid tribute to the dead officer. When an assassination's bullet targeted two officers, it targeted this city and it touched the soul of the entire nation, Joe Biden told mourners. New York's mayor, whose relations with police have been severely strained, said the officer had believed in protecting others. Ramos, a regular churchgoer, was studying to become a police chaplain. Relatives and close friends of Ramos recalled him as a man devoted to his church and to calling the people he loved frequently just to see how they were doing. Both officers have become a rallying point for police who have faced protests accusing the force of racist practices. The killer, 28-year-old Ismail Princely, had said he was avenging the deaths of unarmed black men shot by police. That's it for this edition of the English News. Thank you for being with us. You can catch us at the same time tomorrow. Until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.